Hey guys, I'm just up on my roof and I thought I would do a video on asphalt shingles. Uh, I've got a question in the comment section below asking about whether you can use asphalt shingles for the harvest of rainwater. So in this video, that's what we're going to talk about. The thing is with asphalt shingles is that they are fairly porous. They've got this aggregate which is stuck to this asphalt felt matrix if you will and the aggregate is stuck to it but it's not stuck that well and so it's amazing how much aggregate actually falls into the gutters which can create all sorts of problems now in addition to that depending on where you live will depend on what else they've put into those shingles so if you're living in a really wet climate those shingles likely have some sort of antifungal property to prevent things like moss growing or other things um, and so if it's in the shingles it's going to probably end up in the water which is unfortunate so those are just a few things to think about um, they're obviously could be bitumen or other products or byproducts that come off of these things so it's something to consider now what I love about this question is that if you are unwilling to drink it or you're unwilling to use it on your garden should we actually be using asphalt shingles on our roof what's the difference if that water is going into the river versus into our garden somebody's got to deal with that pollution so when this question comes up it's usually an incredible opportunity to think about the impacts that we're creating as a result of making unconscious decisions so a much better roofing material is something that's going to be smooth like a metal roofing material ideally if you're going to use metal you're going to use something like standing seam which we'll talk about in a future video um, concrete tiles can be used as long as the concrete used to build the tiles is made out of concrete that does not have fly ash in it Fly ash is a byproduct from the combustion of coal to produce electricity and can have all sorts of heavy metals. You can look that up on Wikipedia and get a ton of information on um, what fly ash consists of. Um, and so in countries where rainwater harvesting has been around for a long time, they've gone a step further and they've actually started certifying which roofing materials are good and, and not good. Um, Australia would be an example of that. But what's really interesting about rainwater harvesting and specifically the storage, well the whole system actually, is that every component in the system, if it's designed properly, ends up becoming part of the treatment system. So the roof, if it's smooth, is a form of, the, uh, or represents part of the treatment system in that it's getting sterilized by UV radiation um, and it's not accumulating a whole bunch of of byproducts essentially. The gutters, if they're properly designed, are also getting UV sterilized as long as they don't have gutter guards on them um, and they've got the right slope. The uh, tank itself is really interesting because based on some work um, from Dr. Professor Peter Coombs, and I'll put a link to his website in the show notes below, as well as one of his uh, PhD students, Dr. Spinks, uh, they determined that the biofilms that naturally form in rain tanks are actually a form of bioremediation. So in one of the studies they found that the uh, concentrations of lead were up to 300,000 times the concentration in the biofilms on the side of the tank as they were in the, the water column in the middle of the tank which gave very strong indications that the biofilms are actually hyper accumulating some of these toxins um, and thus the tank became part of the treatment system. So rainwater is a super interesting topic. I think it's going to become a very important industry in the future given the constraints of water in the, in the, in the future. If you are using an asphalt shingle roof, feel free to go and use it as a uh, rainwater harvesting surface for your garden. I don't necessarily recommend drinking it. If you're going to drink your rainwater, you're going to want to look at some different roofing surfaces. Hopefully you found that interesting. If you're looking for more information on rainwater harvesting, we just wrote a book called Essential Rainwater Harvesting from New Society Publishers. I'll put a link to that book in the show notes below and it goes through all of these topics in detail. The book is very interesting because it talks about how 
the research in rainwater is not always congruent with what the regulatory agencies say and so you might find that really interesting if you have other questions about rainwater harvesting please put them in the comment section below and we can make additional videos about it if you found this video insightful hit the like button and if you're not subscribed to our youtube channel hit the subscribe button if you hit it twice with the bell icon you'll be notified when new videos go up and from time to time we go live so watch for our live streaming on youtube and you'll get a chance to interface with us and uh, ask us whatever questions you have on anything related to rainwater harvesting passive solar greenhouses or permaculture in general thanks so much guys have a great day we'll see you in the next video